This is the OTB Network. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this week's edition of Horses and Courses. I'm your host, Anthony Mormino. Fifteen races to bring you, including a very big day down at Turfway Park on their Kentucky Cup Classic weekend. But we're going to kick you off down at Calder Racecourse. This will be the stage door. Betty, this is a mile and a sixteenth. The even money favorite trip for AJ. And they're up. And a good start for Trip for AJ from the outside stall. Diosa Indian, though, coming on through to take up the running. And Successful Song is in between those two. So the three favorites are up front early on. Annie Rowe and my pal Chrissy will have to do their running from the back of the pack as the quintet makes their way into the first turn. No surprise early on, Diosa Indian in her usual spot up front as they make their way around the clubhouse turn, and she's kicked away to about a two-and-a-half, three-length lead. Successful Song runs in the second spot, and Trip for AJ's just outside of her, less than four lengths off the pace. Then it's my pal Chrissy. Annie Rowe is the trailer of the five. The opening quarter was pretty easy, 24-2 and two for these quality Phillies as Diosa Indian and Fernando Hara show the way up the back stretch. It's Diosa Indian just a length right now as successful song inches ever closer from the outside and she's poised in a good spot there in that second position. Trip for AJ remains in third after a half mile that was an easy 49 seconds flat. And the gray filly Annie Rowe now joining Trip for AJ, actually poking her head into third as they go into the turn. My pal Chrissy is the trailer, and they're less than three furlongs from the money. Here comes Successful Song to engage Diosa Indian on the front end. Diosa Indian just a head in front. Successful Song breathing down her neck, and Trip for AJ coming under a little bit of a ride now. She's still got two lengths to make up. My pal Chrissy trying to move in from the back of the pack as Successful Song and Diosa Indian turn for home side by side successful song is doing better successful song on to the front trip for AJ still has a length and a half to make up my pal Chrissy is closing on the outside she's closing best of all here comes my pal Chrissy a successful song my pal Chrissy wins the stage door Betty successful song with second tight for third Diosa Indian or trip for AJ and bombs away, ladies and gentlemen. 14 to 1, longest price on the board. You saw the three uh, favorites in the race uh, running around the racetrack. But my pal Chrissy, who bobbled at the start, but I thought received an extraordinarily patient ride. Now, this, my pal Chrissy, she is mostly a sprinter by trade and had, this was a 13 race car that called her on Saturday. And she had entered into a sprint, cross entered in a sprint. Later on in the card, not allowed in New York, but allowed down in Florida. Chose the root race here against, you know, basically three tough horses in here. I mean, Trip for AJ, who they made even money, had won two off-the-turf stakes in uh, July down at Calder. was the even money favorite. And successful song, you saw the familiar silks of Live Oak Plantation. Hadn't won a race in 364 days. They don't get the money. At $30.40, my pal Chrissy wins the stage door Betty handicap on Saturday down at Calder. Now we're going to go to Delaware Park and originally scheduled for the turf course, but the Kent stakes race for three-year-olds was washed off of the turf, and they made King Kanji, never a winner on dirt, the four to five favorite. We're set. And they're off in the Kent Stakes. I'm stepping it up, breaks well toward the inside. That's 49 watts. As they come to the finish line the first time, up on the far outside, Fire with Fire is looking for a spot. I'm stepping it up, leads him. Passing the finish line the first time by a length. Fire with Fire toward the outside. 49 watts hands the rail as they make their end of the turn. Followed by Wild Jacob. Uncle Brent is up on the outside, and King Kanji settles in the sixth as they make their way around the clubhouse turn. I'm stepping it up, leads it by two. Fire with fire, chasing on the outside. 49 watts has the rail secured. Then a half length further back, moving up between horses. Wild Jacob, Uncle Brent still three wide around the bend, and King Kanji settles in the sixth, about seven lengths off the lead after an opening quarter of 24 and two. 
They make their way down the back stretch. I'm stepping it up in Jeremy Rose on the front end by about a length and three quarters. Fire with fires going easily in second. For Dan Watts toward the rail while Jacob is there. Uncle Brent up on the outside and two more lengths to King Concha yet to get underway. They've got just over a half mile to go opening half in 49 seconds flat. I'm stepping it up showing the way by a length and a half still over fire with fire. 49 Watts toward the inside. Uncle Brent is moving up there three wide while Jacob and King Ganji now trying to get underway with three eighths to go. I'm stepping it up, still leads it by a length and a half. Fire with fire is chasing now, is all out, but I'm stepping it up, begins to step it up. Opens up two and a half, three lengths on the field. King Kanji begins to lengthen stride in third, has five to make up, but time is running out a quarter to go. Well off the rail, it's I'm stepping it up. They've gone the six and one thirteen. I'm stepping it up, still has enough left in the tank right now, it appears. Here comes King Janji charging up on the outside, to the inside, fire with fire. I'm stepping it up, holding on by three. King Kanji's closing on the outside, but I'm I'm stepping it up, is going to give Tony Pecoraro career win number 1,000 in the Kent Stakes. Wins it by two, King Kanji second, fire with fire third. And Jeremy Rose, the winning pilot in the Kent Stakes. I'm stepping up, I mean, interesting horse in here. You know, two for 13 coming into this race, but the two victories, explosive performances going two turns at Delaware. And you saw only six runners in here, and you saw Saddlecloth number 12. Well, there were seven scratches out of this race, but not only because of off the turf, but some horses uh, cross-entered and choosing to run in the Million Dollar Pennsylvania Derby, which we'll get to in a couple moments. But I'm stepping up makes every pole a winning one for Jeremy Rose. King Kongi now 0 for 4 lifetime on the dirt, 9 to 10 on the board, and fire with fire for Windstar Farm finishes third, the final running time in this year's edition of the Kent. Unfortunately, washed off the turf, run on the main track, 150.50. Big day of racing down at Parks Racing a couple years ago. They moved the Pennsylvania Derby off of Labor Day, you know, closing day at Saratoga. Moved it later into the month of September, sort of giving three-year-olds a chance to really not have to face older horses until the Breeders' Cup Classic. You have the million-dollar purse uh, in that, so they have a big day there. Up first, though, six furlongs. The track had really gotten fast, uh, no surprise, on a big day at a racetrack. But the gallant Bob, 3-2, to two, Poseidon's Warrior. Here at the gate. And they're off in the Gallant Bob. Royal Courier, he's spiteful. Both come out quickly, and it's he's spiteful. He's spiteful up to get the lead. Inside pressure, though, from Royal Courier, who is now just a neck back second. Just a length back to Poseidon's Warrior, who's just off the lead third. It's another half length to Indiano. The uh, eight to five choice now moves up into the fourth position. Down inside, it's Biddy fifth. Wine Police is toward the back of the pack with Deputy Fling. Those two side by side. They're both running about five back after an opening quarter of 21 and two. Track is very fast. Three gates to go. It's Royal Courier. Royal Courier is now in front of length and a half. He's spiteful. His back giving chase second. Poseidon's Warrior in a good striking spot. And here comes Indiano to the outside. Indiano is beginning to make his run from fourth out the middle of the racetrack, but they have to come and get Royal Courier. Royal Courier went a half in 43 and 2, an eye popping half mile, and Royal Courier is drawing away. Royal Courier now in front by four. Poseidon's Warriors are driving second. Indiana has not been a factor, but Royal Courier is just going to run them off their feet today at 18 to 1. Royal Courier, sensational. A four length win in the Gallant Bob. Now the first thing that jumps out at me, folks, is the 54 and 4. I mean, we see 21 and change frequently around the country. We see 43 and change for the half sporadically. In this case, 43-43, sporadically. I cannot recall seeing 54 and change for five furlongs. Not ever, but 54-96. And it didn't look like Royal Courier was all out at that point tripping the teletimer at the eighth pole under 55, setting the new track record 107.51 and returning to his backers $39.80 as Poseidon's warrior with Frankie Pennington, you know, did as well as he could expect, I think. 
But Royal Courier at 19 uh, to 1, almost 19 to 1, not quite the longest shot on the board. Deputy Fling was better than 55 to 1 finish last. But, you know, this offspring of Red Bullet made it look so easy. We had a couple examples in New York last week where horses at big prices dominated their races, not stakes races, and you just don't see that very often. But Royal Courier as fast and as easy as can be for at nearly 19 to 1 in Saturday's Gallant Bob. The big race on Saturday, a race that uh, has been around a long time, whether it was on run on Memorial Day uh, weekend or run on Labor Day, now finding its way into the back part of September. The big uh, purse uh, edition in the early part of the 2000s has made the Pennsylvania Derby a pretty darn big spot. Has sort of hurt the Super Derby in here and Bill Mott. Bill Mott sent over to honor and serve who won an allowance race at Saratoga going two turns was the eight to five favorite in the Penn Derby. And they're off in the 32nd Pennsylvania Derby. And a very even break rush now is there for mid-pack. Norman is Bjornsson and Arthur's tail on the inside. On the outside, it is Isn't He Perfect and to honor and serve. But Rush now under the line leads the way by a length and a half. Long shot Isn't He Perfect is in between horses. To honor and serve moving three wide into the first turn. Norman is Bjornsson with a spot at the inside fourth. Rattlesnake Bridge not far off the pace today. Rattlesnake Bridge is now into the fifth position and only three lengths off early front runner Rush now. Arthur's tail sitting at ground saving sixth. Roller on Ice, the Belmont winner, has dropped well back here in the early going. Roller on Ice is down inside. He's already eight, almost nine back. He's about to be passed by Pender Harbor. Stretch running J.W. Blue at the back of the pack. Has about nine lengths to make up. They went the opening quarter in 23-1, and one, a solid half mile of 46-3. and three. So a good clip here being set by Rush now, fast but not too fast. And he goes past the half mile pole, Rush now leading it by almost two lengths. To honor and served has now moved into the second position. On the inside, Norbertus Bjornsson is running along third. Here comes Rattlesnake Bridge. Rattlesnake Bridge now gets his cue to go with three furlongs to go. But to honor and serve has got to get first run. Here comes to honor and serve. Now to engage Rush now. Rush now on the inside. To honor and serve just under a very confident hand right here by Jose Lescano. And to honor and serve is taken command at the top of the stretch. Rattlesnake Bridge is leveled off a bit on the outside. His rally is stalled. And here comes J.W. Blue down the middle of the racetrack. But to honor and serve, inside that final furlong has opened up a four-length lead. Roller on ice kicking in with a late run. Roller on ice coming fast on the outside, but he will have too much ground to make up. It is to honor and serve. To honor and serve wins the derby by three. Roller on ice second. Rattlesnake Bridge was third. It is to honor and serve. Chris? Well, this track record was preserved. The stakes record set by Western Playboy in 1989, though, falls to honor and serve. You see 147.34, uh, and uh, Timber Reserve went 0. .67, but Western Playboy 147.60, broken by to honor and serve, who exiting the stakes, uh, the allowance victory, excuse me, at Saratoga, goes nine furlongs once again. Ruler on ice, a second place finish uh, in here, and Rattlesnake Bridge, those were the three chalks in this race, and the only thing about to honor and serve for me was he changed leads three times in the stretch, which is two more than uh, I would like. Now, there may have been an incident, looked like uh, in the middle of the stretch, uh, he looked beautiful, and then all of a sudden he switched back to the incorrect lead, weaved into the middle of the racetrack. Jose Lescano worked with that for a while as Ruler on Ice was running well through the lane. But then you saw just before the line to honor and serve, went back on his correct lead, leveled off, and Ruler on Ice was not able to get any closer in Saturday's $1 million, 32nd running of the Pennsylvania Derby. He goes to, to honor and serve. We'll see how the three-year-old classic winners, you know, go forward. You know, some great doubts about uh, how high the bar was set for the three-year-old championship and to honor and serve a horse that I had high hopes for coming out of uh, the winter does win a million-dollar race as a three-year-old. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, a handful of races from Turfway Park.
And welcome back to Handicap Report. Now time to turn our attention to Turfway Park where the Kentucky Cup Series is run. And don't be fooled, we have a couple of Philly races named after Stallions, just to make it a little confusing for us. And first up is one of those. This is the Tis Now Kentucky Cup Juvenile Phillies going two turns, one mile on the poly at 9 to 5, Rainbow Blossom. Post. And they're off in the Juvenile Phillies. For the lead from the inside, Queen Anna, Rainbow Blossom, Spring Eclipse up in the center of the track. That's best of times. Then on the outside, Charming Vixen into the first turn and best of times. Gets the lead from Queen Anna second. Gaining on the outside, Charming Vixen. Now it's best of times ahead in front. Charming Vixen on the outside, those two together. Then it's a length back. Rusticana moves up and takes third. From the outside, Courtly Flyer fourth. Queen Anna now fifth. Rainbow Blossom is a sixth. Then from between horses, heated debate. A length to spring eclipse, gap of four. The trailer is little Sadie, 24 flat for the opening quarter. And best of times has the lead a half length. Charming Vixen second, Queen Anna back up into third. Rusticana is fourth. On the outside, Courtly Flyer runs a fifth. Then it's heated debate. Spring eclipse is gaining as they move into the turn. It's best of times and charming Vixen, they're right together. Length and a half back to Rusticana. Then up from the outside, Courtly Flyer. Spring Eclipse is gaining ground from the center of the track, but into the stretch. It's charming Vixen, who now moves by and gets the lead. Late run here from Heated Debate, who moves into second. Spring Eclipse third. It's Charming Vixen and Calvin Burrell. Charming Vixen wins it by three. Heated debate up for second. Spring Eclipse third. Photo for fourth. You know, watching uh, Calvin Burrell and Brian Hernandez at the top of the stretch I, and looking at their lack of motion on their runners, I almost thought they were making another lap at Turfway Park. The favorite, Rainbow Blossom, finishes dead last. The second choice, Charming Vixen, a maiden. Scores the victory. Heated debate, who debuted at Arlington Park on August 28th in the second career start, is the runner-up. But uh, Charming Vixen was 0 for 3, scores the very convincing uh, victory under Calvin Burrell in the Tis Now Kentucky Cup Juvenile Phillies. Mentioned this, uh, Will mentioned this, an offspring of the stallion that I think flies under the radar screen. Uh, Bernstein, this is uh, goes out for trainer Tommy Amos. Char Charming Vixen, no longer a maiden after winning Saturday's Kentucky Cup Juvenile Phillies. Up next, uh, this is one of the intriguing things for years at the Kentucky Cup. The Juvenile Boys, they race a different distance than the Juvenile Phillies. They go a mile and 16. This is the Bluegrass Cat, and it will be easy to find off of the 7 to 5 morning line, the 1 to 2 favorite. Hansen. At the post. And they're off for the lead from the outside Hansen, the inside space traveler between those two prices posse. Then my new found saint and fine into the first turn. Hansen has the lead now just by a length. My new found saint. Moves through on the inside. Gap of two and a half to Space Traveler in third. Fine is fourth ahead. Price is Posse fifth. Downtown Driggs a sixth. Then it's a length to Future in seventh. The trailer is Hollywood Script. 23 and four for the quarter. Hansen has drawn away. Hansen already has opened a five length lead. My newfound Saint is second. Space Traveler moving easily in third. Price is Posse fourth. Down along the inside, Fine is fifth. Four lengths back to Downtown Driggs. The trailers are Future and Hollywood Script. Quick half mile, 46 and four for the half mile. Hanson by four lengths. Space Traveler is second. Fine now gains ground from third. 
My newfound Saint fourth, Price's Posse on the outside runs fifth, Downtown Driggs is sixth. Moving far the stretch, and Hanson is still there by six lengths over Space Traveler and Fine Price's Posse, but into the stretch, and it's all Hanson. Hanson is in front by ten. Downtown Driggs and Fine are together for second, but it's going to be another romping win for Hanson and Victor LeBron. Hanson, super impressive. Hanson by a dozen lengths again. Hanson, a rising star, just wins it very impressively. Fine second over downtown Driggs in a photo. Well, this almost white son of Tappet won the career debut on September 9th at Turfway by a pole, follows it up against winners for the first time, jumping into stakes company, wins by a pole once again as easily as could be. The half-mile time, they heard Mike Battaglia talk 46-4. and four. You, we will see eventually more than a full second faster than the half mile in the classic later on. And this kicked off an extraordinary 70 minutes for trainer Michael Maker. But Hanson, slow to change leads in the lane. Some serious questions, even with this solid pedigree, about how far Hanson wants to go. But remember, after a smashing career debut, you know, this horse came back. 15 days later, and ran big once again. So kudos to Hanson scoring the impressive victory in the Kentucky Cup Juvenile. Up next, time to get to the Kentucky Cup Sprint, named after Spice Town, the 2-1 to one favorite, Cal Nation. There at the post. And they're off. Cal Nation was off slowly and is dead last for the lead on the outside. Song of Humor. Will's Wildcat between horses. Big Albert down along the rail. Then from the outside, Ronan Dax. Center of the track, Felipe is next. Two and a half back to free entry. Then it's Lou Brissy, followed between horses by Unsaddled Glory and Matthews Berg. Two more to Chilled and a gap of three. Cal Nation is the trailer after a 21 and four opening quarter. And Will's Wildcat now has the lead by a half length. On the outside, Song of Humor. Felipe gains ground from third. Center of the track, Matthewsburg moves a closer fourth. Two lengths back, Ronan Dax is now fifth. Then up from the center of the track, that's free entry, but into the stretch, it's Matthewsburg, who now moves by and gets the lead. Felipe takes second. On the inside, Will's Wildcat now third. It's Matthewsburg, another win for Maker and LeBron. Photo for second between Felipe and Will's Wildcat. $20.60 for this rather easy Winner of the Kentucky Cup Sprint, uh, Victor LeBron and Michael Maker score another victory, wrapping up the daily double for them, but they'll have more to come in just a moment. Exiting uh, July 30th race at Penn National in the middle of the racetrack, and you saw Calvin Burrell on the leader, Wills, while Wildcat wanted no part of the rail on the turn. I think that tells us a lot. Felipe finishes second under Edgar Prado. Cal Nation, he beat five, and five beat him. This offspring, the winner of Matthewsburg, an offspring of Ghost Zapper out of the mayor, Romantic Comedy, who is a daughter of AP Indy. Up next, time for the Phillies and Mares. This is the Distorted Humor Kentucky Cup. Distaff, the even money favorite, exiting the Beverly D, is upper line. There at the post. And they're off for the lead from between horses. Kiss Mine with Bella Medallia. Then up on the outside, persuading Ayla Leah. Through from the rail, high quality. They're well bunched as they move for the first turn. Persuading from the center of the track, high quality on the rail. Between those two, Kiss Mine and Bella Medallia. Gap of two and a half, upper line runs fifth. Elalia sixth, and La Grande Belladora is the trailer after a 24-2 opening quarter. 
High quality has the lead a half length. On the outside, persuading, those two are right together. Then it's a length back. Kiss Mine is third ahead. Bella Medallia on the outside, fourth by two and a half. Upper line, fifth. Elalia, sixth. Then five lengths back to La Grande Belladora. The half went in 48 and two, and persuading is in front. Has it by a length. High quality second ahead, Bella Medallia third. Alalia moves to the outside, takes fourth ahead. Kiss Mine is fifth, upper line still sixth, and La Grande Belladora trails into the turn. The leader persuading, but just by ahead. Now up on the outside, that's Bella Medallia. Bella Medallia moves right by and gets the lead, gaining ground. Here comes La Grande Belladora from dead last. They're into the stretch. Here's La Grande Belladora on the outside of Bella Medallia. It's going to be those two to the wire. Bella Medallia, La Grande Belladora, another one for Mike Maker. La Grande Belladora and Corey Landry win it by a length over Bella Medallia. Kiss mine and persuading. Yes, the Mike Maker. Pick three comes back $173.20. LeGrand Belladora from last to first under Corey Lannery. You saw the white cap making the very successful move on the turn and running down the early uh, leaders at 4-1. to one. Upper line, first time Turfway Park exiting the Beverly D. Doesn't beat a horse at even money to finish last. Uh, Bella Medallia finished second. Kiss mine. Uh, mentioned her in here. Bobbled at the start and then rushed up. I thought him put in a very, very big effort to finish third. Looked like a little bit like a dust bowl going into that first turn, ladies and gentlemen. I think we can get that water truck around uh, Turfway Park. But La Grande Belladora taps off, tops off, I should say, uh, Michael Maker's personal pick three. Goes out for owner with the familiar silks, Tracy Farmer. Up next, the premier race of the Kentucky Cup Day, the 17th running of the Kentucky Cup, sponsored by Windstar, the 2-1 to one favorite, Barishnikov. There at the post. And they're off. Future prospect broke well, so did working for hops. And on the inside, strike impact. Moving up from the outside, have a lock. Then on the outside, that's General Quarters, followed on the inside by Demarcation, Barishnikov, and the early trailer, Shediak, midway through the first turn. Strike Impact gets the lead, has it a half length over Future Prospects, second by two and a half. Havelock on the outside runs third, General Quarters is fourth, working for Hops now runs fifth. Two back to demarcation. Barishnikov on the outside, and Shediak is the trailer. 24 and 2 for the quarter. Future prospect ahead in front of Strike Impact. Gap of two lengths. Then it's Havelock third ahead. General Quarters gains from fourth. Working for Hops is right there in fifth. Shediak is sixth. Barishnikov on the outside, seventh. Demarcation trails as they move into the turn. Future prospect leads at a length. General Quarters up on the outside, gains and takes second. Then it's Havelock in third, working for Hops takes fourth. Moving through from the inside, that's Shediak in fifth. Barishnikov is on the extreme outside, but into the stretch, it's General Quarters and Future Prospect. Future Prospect has the lead over General Quarters. On the outside, Barishnikov, it's Future Prospect. In front of General Quarters, late run from Demarcation, Future Prospect, and Edgar Prado spring the upset. General Quarters second photo for third, Demarcation, and working for Hops. Four in a row for Future Prospect. The New York bred shipping in from Presque Isle gets the victory. Heck, this horse won the funny side at the spa two summers ago. Big, big upset in this field of eight in the Kentucky Cup at the wagering windows. 18 to 1, 10 to 1, 17 to 1, a $3,300 trifecta, a $16,000 superfecta. Figured there was about $5 worth of winning tickets in the superfecta in the Windstar. But future prospect, a New York bred, goes down and wins the 
hundred and well two hundred thousand dollar Kentucky Cup, a very very nice ride by Edgar Prado. General Court has been around a long time. Finishes second in here in demarcation. Barishikov had a handful of victories at Turfway Park. He finishes fifth as the even money favorite in Saturday's Windstar Kentucky Cup. We're gonna take a quick break. When we come back, two more stops on this week's of Horses and Courses, Woodbine and Belmont. Welcome back to Horses and Courses. Now time to bring you two races from Woodbine over the weekend. On Saturday, we have the Nine Furlong Ontario Derby, the 3-2 favorite. A horse that we saw up in Saratoga finish second in the Jim Dandy, then off the board in the Traverse Stakes, Moonshine Mullen. They're at the post. They're off in the Ontario Derby. Moonshine Mullen, Silver Leo, Bowman's Causeway, and O Canada as they move in front of us for the first time. And it's Silver Leo who has the early lead. Moonshine Mullen relaxes at the rail in second. Bowman's Causeway just to the outside of Moonshine Mullen and O Canada's fourth in the early going. Then we have Alpha Better and a Derby Kitten. The Nimos between horses and Apolitus is three wide. That opening quarter in 24 and four. They run to the three quarter pull. And it's this 60 to one shot, Silver Leo, who sets the early pace. Bowman's Causeway, a length and a half back in second. Moonshine Mullen saved ground through that first turn. O Canada's on the outside, fourth and three lengths off the lead. Alpha Better is sent up between Moonshine Mullen and O Canada. Then Hippolytus, Derby, Kitten, is at the back of the pack and six lengths off the lead. Has Nanaimo to the outside, 49 and two. The pace still being set by Silver Leo in the run to the three eighths pole. Silver Leo by a length and three quarters. Bowman's Causeway gets a little nudge now from Eureka Rosa to Silva. And there goes Bowman's Causeway to the neck of Silver Leo. Oh, Canada's gaining ground in third. Moonshine Mullen lacks running room to the quarter pole. Hippolytus to the extreme outside. And Derby Kitten's also going to have to find a way out as they come to the top of the stretch. Bowman's Causeway, O Canada, Hippolytus, Moonshine Mullen dives to the rail and Derby Kitten's coming hard. Hippolytus has emerged with the lead. Hippolytus, Derby Kitten flying weight on the outside. Derby Kitten, Hippolytus, Moonshine Mullen, Derby Kitten and Mike Smith to win the Ontario Derby to Hippolytus and Moonshine Mullen. Bowman's Causeway was fourth and derby kitten and on this occasion mike smith's patience was fully rewarded saved all the ground on the turn it looked as though we get boxed in but when they came off the turn a spot opened up for derby kitten mike smith put derby kitten in that spot and scores the victory now this horse won the lexington stakes in the spring down at the poly track at keeneland exits the secretariat stakes as the third choice in the wagering moonshine mullen at 3-2 under Emma Jane Wilson finishes third. 
and Bowman's Causeway fourth. Uh, two horses we saw run sixth and seventh, respectively, in the Travers. Trainer Michael Maker giving him a four bagger on horses and courses. And over the 27 years of horses and courses, I don't think, uh, besides guys named Lucas, Pletcher, or, or Mott, there have been too many four baggers. And thinking about it, how many four baggers have there ever been on HNC? Not from a Hall of Fame trainer or soon to be Hall of Fame trainer in Todd Pletcher's case. On Sunday, they ran three year old Phillies in the Celine Stakes at a mile and a 16th. The four to five favorite, we saw her recently not lift a foot in the Alabama. This year's winner of the Queen's Plate, Inglorious. They're at the post. Uh, they're off in the Celine Stakes. Smart Sting bounced out of there. For an early lead, Anne's Beauty and Glorious close to the pace in third. Dynamic Holiday back in a fourth, and a Ms. Silver Oak is fifth as they run to the seven eights pole. And it's Smart Sting who's setting the pace. Anne's Beauty angles off the rail now. Anne's Beauty is taken to the outside by Patrick Husbands. And Inglorious is third and just over two lengths off the lead. Then Dynamic Holiday and Ms. Silver Oak. 24 and four fifths for the opening quarter. And they head into this Woodbine backstretch. And it's Smart Sting being nursed on a lead of a half a length. Anne's Beauty, the Ontario Colleen winner, gains ground on the outside now and pokes the neck in front. And it's Anne's Beauty at the midpoint of the backstretch. Smart Sting is second, right on Anne's Beauty's heels is the Queen's Plate champion and glorious. Down to the inside, Dynamic Holiday is fourth, and Silver Oak is fifth. The half was 49 and four, and it's a tight group of three-year-old fillies as they run into the turn. Smart Sting comes back on and reclaims the lead for Man's Beauty. Inglorious is between horses. Has Dynamic Holiday to her inside, to her outside is Ms. Silver Oak. They ran three quarters and one 14 and three. Smart Sting will sprint for home now. Contreras is asking the plate winner between horses. Anne's Beauty's on the outside, and it's Smart Sting sprinting for the wire. Anne's Beauty, and Glorious has a lot to do in less than an eighth of a mile to do it. Smart Sting, Smart Sting and Eureka Rosa da Silva, runaway winners of the Celine. Anne's Beauty was second, and Glorious third, and Dynamic Holiday fourth. And there was a claim of foul by Inglorious trying to get second place. The claim was disallowed, but Smart Sting, ladies and gentlemen, by the great stallion Smart Strike, who was a terrific runner out of the mare and champion turf runner. Perfect Sting. Boy, I'll tell you, for Frank Stronic, you would think that pedigree doesn't get any better than this. Well, Smart Strike, she wins the 58th running of the Celine Stakes. Inglorious. Another uh, substandard effort, I guess we'll say. She was 5-for-5 five five at Woodbine. Runs third in here. Tried to get up in between horses coming into the stretch. But nobody was beating Smart Strike on Sunday. Just a quick note for those uh, with computer access. The race immediately following this race was a maiden 2-year-old uh, 7-furlong contest. Uh, a horse named Dead On won that effort owned by Samson Farms uh, in the second career start after debuting going six on the turf. Uh, if you have access to it, I would find uh, this effort uh, of this two-year-old who uh, has already run well enough on turf and then was dynamic going seven-eighths in the second career start. That was the ninth race uh, yesterday at Woodbine. Now time to go to Belmont Park, a couple of stakes races to bring you, including Friday afternoon, Sloppy Sealed, edition of the Positive Gal at 4-5, to five, Roman Treasure in a field of four. And they're off. Maple Forest and Roman Treasure break together. And farther back, Tap for Luck will be third early on alongside Moonlit Malibu. So up the back stretch, and Maple Forest leads the way. Ramon Dominguez is deferring here to Maple Forest and sits back with Roman Treasure through the opening quarter miles, a half length behind. They go that opening quarter in 21 and three-fifths seconds. Sizzling fractions here. Maple Forest and Roman Treasure really going at each other now with three furlongs to go. They really intensified that duel. It's a huge chasm about eight or nine lengths back to the other two, Tap for Luck and Moonlit Malibu. So now they come to the quarter pole, 
Head to head for the lead. On the inside, Maple Forest, and the outside, Roman Treasure. They have run a half in 44 and 2, and now Roman Treasure is starting to prevail. Roman Treasure on top of the eighth pole, now by two, Maple Forest, second long way back to the other two. And they're coming down to the finish, and Roman Treasure wins the duel and the race. Final margin was a half a dozen lengths. Maple Forest second, and Malibu Moonlight third. Well, there you go. Roman Treasure uh, wins by eight at four to five. Maple Forest, the three to two second choice. Wins by eight and a half. The four runners fi finish in the betting order. Uh, you know, you get a sloppy sealed racetrack. And one thing from a handicapper standpoint, difficult. What we take out of here going forward, because as Tom Durkin said, Roman Treasure won the duel now for the Maple Forest uh, backers. At least she wasn't uh, hard-pressed and then made to give up second place in Friday afternoon's Positive Gal. couple stakes races to bring you on Saturday. And for the third time this year, we have the Noble Nashua Stakes. And said this on uh, Saturday, I mean, I know he used to hold the track record going a mile up Belmont. I know he won the Marlboro Cup 30 years ago. But three, three stakes races in one year. And heck, the 8-5 to five favorite, Johannesburg Smile, ran in all three. And they're off. Joe Hannesburg smile. Social saw. And under a busy ride already, most happy fella down from the inside. On the far outside, smoking heroes there. It's Joe Hannesburg smile, social saw, and the hard ridden most happy fella at the rail. On the far outside, smoking hero. Now backs off that developing battle up front into fourth position. And that it's two lengths back to Saginaw and mine over matter. Those two are fifth and sixth, about a half dozen from the lead. A break of another five to Thunder Chief and make note as the trailer as the field moves down the back stretch. The first quarter was hotly contested over the muddy going here. 22 and four was that opening quarter mile. Social Saul in front. Johannesburg smiles second on the outside. And Jeffrey Sanchez still very busy on Most Happy Fella down the inside. On the outside goes uh, Smoke and Hero, now up from fourth. Mine over Matters moving very comfortably. Very comfortably indeed as he as he splits horses as they round the far turn. Social Saul and Johannesburg Smile. Still well conserved is Mine over Matter. Four lengths from the two leaders as they come to the top of the stretch. Farther back, it's Smoke and Hero. And even farther still behind is Thunder Chief as they come to the top of the stretch. It's Joe Hannesburg, smile the leader, as the field turns for home. The whip is out on the front runner now. Social Saul down inside. And on the far outside, mine over matter now. Cut loose as they come into the final furlong. Still has to catch Johannesburg, smile. Joe Hannesburg, smile, still holding on to that lead. Mine over matter, full out on the outside, down toward the rail, it's Social Saul, and they're coming down to the finish, Joe Hannesburg Smile. A two and a half length winner, Social Saul second, Mine over matter third, Thunder Chief fourth. And the third time was the charm for Johannesburg Smile. Uh, presses Social Saul the whole way. They run one, two around the racetrack as the betting choices in here and Johannesburg Smile, who did run in all three of the legs, scores the victory for Dominic Galuccio and Javier Castellano as the 8-5 to five favorite, returning $5.40 on a racetrack that was labeled Muddy for the 6th. And by the time we got to the ninth race on Saturday afternoon, the track had been upgraded to good. For the Grade 2 Foxwoods Gallant Bloom handicap for the Phillies and Mares sprinting even money, we saw her be very good at Saratoga once, Tar Heel Mom. They're in the gate. And they're off. Moon 2 Missy breaks first, and Tar Heel Mom right with her down on the inside. But it's Moon Toon Missy who will be the early leader here. Tar Hill Mom second down the rail. On the outside, there goes Pomeroy's Pistol. Pomeroy's Pistol now up second, just getting past Tar Hill Mom. Tamron Hall runs back in fourth position. At the back of the pack early on here are Buckle Up Buttercup and Lovely Lil. They hit the far turn with Moon Toon Missy on top. 
pursued in earnest by Pomeroy's pistol through a 22 flat opening quarter mile. Long shot leader Moon Toon Missy still right up there with their Pomeroy's pistol. Tamron Hall sent up after them on the far outside. Tar Hill Mom is now back to fourth. Lovely Lil is fifth and buckle up Buttercup as they come to the top of the stretch. Here's Pomeroy's pistol to take over. Pomeroy's pistol in front as the field turns for home. Moon Toon Missy fights on but giving way on the inside. Tamron Hall farther back. Tar Hill Mom is running room right alongside her. It's Lovely Lil. Inside the final furlong, Pomeroy's pistol and Tamron Hall, one, two, down to the final 16th. Pomeroy's pistol's gonna do it. Pomeroy's pistol struts home to a clear cut win here. Tamron Hall finishing second. Lovely Lil was third. Well, kudos, kudos to Pomeroy's pistol. I know this three year old, the only three year old in the race, was the second choice in the wagering. She won the forward gal a grade two early in the year down at Gulfstream Park. But this effort, I thought, was terrific. She did the dirty work chasing Moontown Missy. Then she was between horses. Those two items in and of itself usually spells doom for me. But she scores the victory under Javier Castellano. Very, very impressive score in the grade two Foxwoods Gallant Bloom on Saturday. On Sunday, one stakes race to bring you in off the turf or named after one of the best people to ever be in the horse racing game and a big proponent of the New York Breds. This is the third running of the John Hettinger off the turf. We had three horses at nearly the same price. Spa City Princess, Adam Madcore from Saratoga Springwater, uh, a main track only was the actual 5-2 to betting favorite in the John Hettinger. They're in the gate. And they're off. Akalina, exclusive scheme, has been given her cue very early on here. And Corey Nakatani would like to get that lead and indeed does get it with exclusive scheme, aggressively ridden to the lead. Spa City Princess moves to second on the outside. Akalina third, Rogues Joe fourth by six. And then it's Mineralogist and the early trailer is go unbridled. 23 and three was the opening quarter mile here. Has exclusive scheme out there now by four. Al Kalina runs along in second. Spa City Princess being nudged along in third. Rogues Jewel settles into a beat. About eight lengths from the leader. Exclusive scheme. A break of six. Still unhurried is Mineralogist and go unbridled. Five furlongs out. First half here was 46 and four fifth seconds by the free willing exclusive scheme. Exclusive scheme, a half a dozen lengths with a half mile to go. Alcalina just on the inside of Spa City Princess. Rogue's Jewel now in a drive about six or seven from the front. Mineralogist not far behind her and go unbridled and they're gaining quickly on exclusive scheme. Exclusive scheme about to be inhaled here now by Spa City Princess as they come to the top of the stretch. Three quarters and 12 flat and it's a spent exclusive scheme that enters the stretch. Top of the stretch and Spa City Princess is the leader. Go unbridled is now second on the outside. Alkalina third. Mineralogist comes out for the drive. Inside the final furlong. Go unbridled and Spa City Princess. Go unbridled up for the lead. And then Spa City Princess followed by Rogue's Jewel. And they're coming down to the finish. It will be Go Unbridled. Spa City Princess beaten the length. Rogue's Jewel was third. Mineralogist was fourth. Go on, Bridal scores the victory under Ramon Dominguez goes out for the chief, Mr. Allen Jerk. And Spa City Princess, the actual 5-2 to two betting favorite over the 5-2 to two, uh, second choice winner. Uh, they were the only main track onlys in this race. They run 1-2 coming out of the Saratoga Dew. But the fourth place horse, Mineralogist, also exiting the Saratoga Dew and ran fourth as the third 5-2 to two shot horse. Uh, going out for, let's see, John Kimmel, I, I believe, yes. Now, interesting thing about mineralogists, talked about this in New York a couple times. Mineralogists has never run on the turf. So I think for John Kimmel, he just didn't want an outside post position if it should come down to that because I think mineralogists received the race that, uh, that she wanted. But she runs fourth to the declared main track only, go unbridled, Spa City Princess, 
Roll Jewel finishes third in Sunday's John Hettinger. Well, that wraps up horses and courses for this week. Remembering that Santa Anita opens up on Friday, September 30th. The next day at Belmont Park and around the country, some outstanding, outstanding stakes races as we, as we work our way towards the Breeders' Cup. And we'll have those for you next Monday. Have a great week at the races.